Now let's go ahead and build a surface. Um, I'm just going to make something really simple. I'm just going to make a, a loft. Just draw a line. I'm going to go to edit and rebuild so that I have seven control points with a degree of three. And then I'll just copy this guy over a couple of times. And I will loft. Okay, so now I have a surface here. Now the idea is that I'm going to go ahead and take this surface into uh, Grasshopper and subdivide it into a series of boxes. So open up Grasshopper again. Let's create a new document. Now let's bring our surface in. Params, geometry, surface, set one surface. So this is the surface to subdivide. And the idea is, is that we want to input, right? We want to bring in a surface, input a surface. We want to subdivide the surface, create surface boxes, and then morph the mesh primitive into surface boxes. So this is where we're going. So the first step is to take a look at how we can achieve the um, subdivision of the surface. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that a surface is a two-dimensional space composed of U and V. Now, if we want to go to the Surface tab and use something like Divide, that would be really great if we weren't trying to do something like Morph. But because we're trying to create surface boxes to then morph our component into, we actually have to go over to the Transform tab and look at a subcategory called Morphing. And you'll see that under Morphing, at the very, very top, um, you have here a collection of different uh, uh, objects that you can use. Well, the first one we're going to want to look at is surface box. And this says create a twisted box on a surface patch. So this is really what we want to do. We want to take our surface, drop it into the input for the surface. We want to be able to create a box with a certain height. So let's create a slider. So this will be our surface box height. But before we can do that, we have to divide the surface somehow. And you can see that D asks for the surface domain. What it's really asking for is how many times do you want to divide the surface in one direction and the other? So how can we get this done? Well, the first thing, if you remember, is that a surface is a two-dimensional parameter space. And under math domain, there is a whole collection of objects that allow you to work with things like domains. So when we talk about 2D, we have a domain squared. When we talk about wanting to divide the domain, we need to use something called divide domain squared. And this probably makes a lot more sense when you start to look at it like this, especially with the icon. And if you don't have the icons on, you can always turn them on by going to display. So, I, what do you want to divide? The surface. U, V. How many times in U and how many times in V? So this is by default 10, so I'll just drop that in. 
I increase this. All right, we can see we now have a bunch of boxes. Now if we take a slider, set to integer, we can specify the values for u, divide, let's say 1, maybe 20, into u, and 1 for v. So we now have control over how many components will be arrayed and what their height will be. So these are what are referred to as target boxes. So when we talked about this idea of the component morphing, the morphing was the transformation of one entity into another, and that's typically achieved through the sampling of a base and target space. So in the case of what we're doing, is we're looking at how to use these targets as a destination for this component. Now if we go back to transform under morph, there's this really awesome um, tool called box morph. What it says is morph an object into a twisted box. Well here we have twisted boxes. Here you can see target, target boxes. This is where I want my component to end up. Here we have our component. So let's go ahead and say params, geometry, mesh, components, I always do this as, just in case there's more than one, but we only have one. Component to morph. G, what do you want to morph? I want to morph this. And then R, reference box. So does anybody have an idea of what we could use for a reference box? Like how can we determine where that component is in space so that we can then blend or morph into the target? Just go ahead and post a response to the uh, message box. Good, I think we somebody uh, suggested to go ahead and use a bounding box. That's a great suggestion. So let's go to surface primitive and calculate a bounding box. So if you notice that bounding box is a box around our component that can be used as a reference space to then morph the component into our targets. So I'm just going to take B right out into R. Now in doing so, we'll see over here that we have all of our components. Now the problem is, is if you notice, these guys do not seem. Because I haven't taken into account the fact that the component, its edges need to provide for adjacency. Now had I taken a moment over here to take a look at this, I would have noticed right off the bat that my component does not actually copy over and provide continuity. Does anybody have a suggestion as to how we could fix that really quick? Great, you guys are quick. Um, mirroring, that's right. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say, let's go ahead and mirror. So if I mirror it this direction, and I mirror it this direction, 
right? You can see that it's continuous. So do that again. We're going to take our component. I'm going to say transform mirror. I'm going to select my object and then pick which edge to mirror about. I'm going to select these two and repeat that command, transform mirror, and bring it over to here. And you can see now we have a continuous set of components. Now the cool thing with meshes, again, I could select all of these and just go right back to edit, join, and now this is the component. If I zoom out a little bit and I set this into here, now it's continuous. Now it's not the easiest thing to see because of the preview settings in Grasshopper. So the last thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at how to make this a little bit more legible. Now, here we have our morphed components. 